you don't have to have the money to train your children. Welcome on this wonderful episode on Noble TV Live. My name is Chidi Pichas, and of course, this afternoon, I'm going to take you around a very important topic that have to do with poverty challenge to raising children in Africa, specifically in Nigeria. And of course, from statistics, we have about 83 million Nigerian youth that are unemployed. And there we have several million of children that are, of course, from poor background. They have no access to education. Of course, that is as a result of poverty. With me in the studio to discuss and dissect this topic is no other person than Comrade Austin Omido. I mean, you are very much welcome to Noble TV Studio this wonderful day. Thank you so much. It's a nice thing to be here. Yeah. I, I want to take you around the poverty as a challenge to raising children in Africa, specifically in Nigeria. Uh, because this is uh, coming in response to uh, one of our uh, listeners who talk about raising children that beyond anything that poverty is a bane. Mm -hmm. So what's your opinion about that? You see, the word poverty has a lot of uh, definitions, uh, but uh, it depends on who is actually looking at poverty. You have poverty of the mind, you have poverty of cash, you have poverty of knowledge and all that. Now, if you say raising children, if you are poor, for example now, poor in which area? Let's assume poor in terms of uh, money, because that is what uh, many people you know, think about the minute you mention poverty. Now, yes, it may be difficult to raise children with little or no money, but it's not an excuse for anybody not to raise children. Because if you have conscience, if you have uh, knowledge yourself as a parent, you can raise your children without necessarily having the money. You don't have to have the money to train your, to, to train your children. Now, maybe later now you may be able to find out how somebody can train his or her children without really uh, getting the kind of money he needs because a lot of persons think it's so expensive to train children. It's not. It's not as uh, much as we think about it. Now, you see, we are still in the same pipeline where I still maintain you explain more on your stand that you don't need a hell lot of money to train children yes. in Nigerian contemporary society. Yes. For example, now, uh, when we say training children now, we are also all looking at sending children to school, for example. In Delta State, I know that primary school education is free. And I know that it is the same thing in some other states. In which case, with or without even financial efforts from the parents, a child can acquire primary education in Delta State. Now, if you take it off from there and you keep hammering it on your children or your child, that see, you are in school not to play. Other people may be playing, you know, but don't go there to play. Study your books. Read. Listen to your teachers. Because you can get it without... See, I've seen uh, children who never bought complete books as recommended by authorities. And yet, they were able to like borrow from one person and study. Some were able to listen to teachers talk and make their own notes. And they were able to pass and pass very well. You know, because they know their standard financially. Now, if you keep on hammering uh, on, your, on your child that he has to be attentive to class and listen to teachers, you now, as a parent, you are the one that, that has to teach your child what he or she should do to actually acquire the kind of education you want her to acquire. And if she does that, you know, in school, she, uh, she assess. Even if the parents don't even have money, there are persons who are likely to volunteer to train such a child. And even if nobody even volunteers to, to train such a child, you know, nature has a way of making up for our inadequacies, you know. But the first thing to do is to do your bit. Don't resign your faith to poverty. Don't say, I don't have money and therefore I'm folding my hands. No, do your bit. Nature will take care of the next step for you. I see sometimes when, when, when you know, modern mothers make such comments, I begin to wonder because a lot of us come from a very large home where you have a single mother having up to 11 children and of course uh, coming from a poor background and they are able to turn one two three four five six seven up to 11 children up to from primary to university level and uh, here you are in this uh, modern mothers they seem not to understand the processes 
uh, or they should not understand the responsibility of training a child. You know, I, I believe they see everything about training a child uh, uh, is surrounded by everything about money, mm -hmm. about money, money. and money. Yeah. What's your opinion about that? Yes, that is incorrect. Uh, let me give you an example with myself because sometimes uh, you know they say if you want to uh, if an outside man is sick i want to recommend medicine to ask you have you been sick like this before <laughs> you know <laughs> so now let me use myself as an example uh, growing up i had uh, i have a, uh, another brother who during their days before he would go back to school school may have resumed maybe two weeks before he would be able to raise my father would be able to raise money for him to go and how were we able to raise those money that, that time we we'll go to farm. My father will go harvest some coconut, harvest whatever it is that we can harvest, and my mother will go sell them. Then at the end of the day, he will give my my brother money to pay part of the school fees, hoping that by the time he comes back for meet and break, you know they will pay the balance. And sometimes it was not always like that. When he comes back again, he struggles to get the money. Even there were some people, farmers like him, also in the village, you know, peasant farmers. I mean. Who were laughing at him at that time that he was struggling and making efforts in doing what only Uibo people could do that is Uibo people who are teachers and all those but he kept on and uh, today the story is no longer the same when my brother now uh, was able to succeed you know as a, <laughs> a college student now it were he went to lagos and for that point he started making money and the money he was making you know he not much but he was uh, benevolent enough to send money to my father also and my father was using the money joined to what he was making also to send some of us to school and uh, you know and when the moment you go to college there's provision for day students mm -hmm. there's also provision for borders but they have students mm -hmm. so you choose the one that is a convenient for you financially and the most important aspect of it is that as a student you must have somebody that you look up to that is your mentor what did he do don't look at uh, some the, the son of uh, as your mentor no there are some persons who in your society have made it, you know, the way they made it, you know, uh, with a humble background. Look up to them and study how they were able to make it. Are these people, were they like uh, chasing after women? Are they given to drinking when they were in school? Are they people who were blasphemously disobeying their parents? If your parents say, come help me in the farm, you say, no, 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 I'm a, I'm a, I'm a colleague. No. So now, luckily for all, some of us now took after my elder brother. And I tell you, you know, I came from a, from a polygamous family. We have nine children, biologically speaking now. And we had also some, uh, my cousins from my elder sister's children who grew up in my father's house. And uh, all the boys, I think about seven of us, went to the university one way or the other. So the first thing to do is to start. And if you start, the challenge will be taken care of by nature. Yeah, I think I quite agree with you. I, I went through a profile of a renowned professor in Africa, uh, very Reverend Monsana Professor Jaboska Akam, uh, of course, of less memory, and he was talking about how poor his parents were and how they found it very difficult for him to go to school. But suddenly he became a professor and uh, owns a primary school, nursing school, and university, which are almost uh, free of charge for indigenous students in Africa. And of course, uh, that makes a mark that poverty cannot be a bane or a barrier uh, to raising a child. But of course, um, it appears that religion also have a hand uh, where uh, people entrust in God to see a miracle or where I would describe it as a professor Nigeria will have it, uh, a miracle mentality mm -hmm. and entitlement to mentality. Yes. So I think that is also a bane. Yes. So uh, how do you appreciate on this? Yes. You see, faith is not an alternative to hard work and work for that matter. You may have faith. The Bible says faith without work. Is uh, equal to someone who is a uh, building castle in the air. You have to have something that you are building on, because the same scripture says the God will bless the works of your hand. So you must be found to be doing something, no matter how little. So if you are praying, praying for miracle to happen, no, it doesn't happen that way. For miracle to happen, it has to see and identify that person who is ready for the miracle and the miracle can appear if miracle now you know let me use miracle now as a person walking around now to see who to actually appear in his or her house if he sees a student who is given to studies working hard and the miracle looks around and say who is it? who is your parent you now mention the parents ah, ah, <laughs> that one <laughs> it can't go anywhere okay let me just help you go to so and so person and you go 
That person, the first person you may even go to to tell that you don't have money to pay for your jam. Maybe the first that same person that will give you money to pay for your jam uh, uh, examination. That is miracle. But miracle found a student who was so studious that he now felt it requires help. But if you are not studying and you are just at home, you know, while in a wait time, playing a wait time, and you're expecting miracle, it doesn't work that way. You must work as if the only thing you need to succeed is work. When you want to pray, also, you pray as if your life, all your life depends also on prayer. People who see you praying will think you are not working. But when you are working, people who see you again, so you must carry all these things along. I must thank you very much. This topic is a very broad topic that I to take the whole day, even the whole my weeks to talk about. And of course, uh, I mentioned earlier about uh, Professor Nagye. Professor Nagye is the Vice Chancellor of Admiral University in the other state. Of course, he talked about uh, entitlement mentality and miracle mentality, which is uh, the two factors that sometimes hold us back to where we should get ourselves to. Don't always feel entitled to something that you don't work for. And of course, don't always expect miracle when you don't make yourself available for miracle to happen. But what you do, of course, this is why I'm going to draw the curtain today on uh, the very topic I remember you also see all the tuning features and of course on Noble TV Live. Don't fail to like, subscribe, share, and of course comment. Thank you very much on the live.